Well, to my understanding, some of you have been anxiously anticipating this Q&A video for a couple of days now. Sorry for the delay, but you got it now, so I hope you're happy. I didn't get to all of your questions. I just picked and choose some specific ones or random ones, whatever the hell. So let's do the best we can. All right, let's get started. Thanks for you guys that did submit your questions. If I didn't get to you this time, hopefully I will next time. Why is that now? However the hell you say his name. Will more more wrestlers walking out of WWE incite the company to make any changes? And for my money, the very simple answer is no. The WWE is going to look at it and say, we're the golden land of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. We are the ultimate opportunity. And if these guys can't handle it, then we don't need them. The, the WWE is that type of corporation that will take zero responsibility or accountability for anything that they do. And the insulated bubble that they live in and their defenders live in are going to sit there and pretend like nothing's wrong here. It's up. That's on the talent. That's on the wrestlers. And frankly, a couple of years ago, if Punk walking out like he did didn't change anything, why do you think anything's going to change now with a bunch of ham and eggers leaving? And frankly, in the grand scheme of things, Neville, I don't want to call him a ham and egger because I don't think he was a ham and egger talent, but in the grand scheme of WWE's hierarchy as a cruiserweight champion, he was a ham and egger. He didn't matter. They just plugged somebody else in like they did with Enzo, and now they actually put those cruiserweight title matches on pay-per-view's main card, not on the pre-show. So that's not, that's not going to change shit. Uh, Michael Corvin from the WNC for Life crew. I've been on the show before. Can't wait to do it again. Should Bray Wyatt be sent back down to NXT to build his, rebuild his career? No. You've gotten to the point where you've had enough of a run with him. If you've gotten to that point where you don't feel like you can do anything more with him and you feel like you need to rebuild him, you either need to rebuild him and totally change uh, how you present him in the main roster or you need to future endeavor him. I don't think NXT does any good for him. I just don't. B.W. Rosas, is WWE trying to get back at fans for Daniel Bryan and what happened in 2014 by booking matches like Brock versus Jinder? No. Mm -mm. I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think that has more to do with what happened with Daniel Bryan in 2014 as to why Vince won't clear Daniel Bryan to wrestle now. Daniel Bryan could physically wrestle. I fully believe that. And I fully believe that the only reason that he doesn't is because of Vince McMahon. It has absolutely nothing to do with Daniel Bryan's long-term health. It has to do with a lot of the things the WWE fearful of. If they put Daniel Bryan back out there, the fans are going to galvanize and get behind him like they did before and try to force his way to the top and damn anything else the company's going to do. They're trying to protect Roman Reigns, and I understand it. I wouldn't want that freaking distraction for Daniel Bryan. And that's not specifically Daniel Bryan, but what would come along with Daniel Bryan. With that said, the WWE is in a position where they need anybody that can actually be over to a star level. And Daniel Bryan could be that. So I think it's ridiculous. But in terms of Brock versus gender, no, there are reasons for Brock versus gender that have absolutely nothing to do with Daniel Bryan. Nothing to do with him. Nick's Moonstone, what happened to the impact reviews? Well, with the Cubs being in the playoffs... Um, it was really hard to sit there when the games are on Thursday night, sit there, watch Impact, and then go back and watch it. So doing other stuff, so on and so forth. So they got put on the back burner for a little bit, I will admit. Um, I intend on getting back into reviewing Impact, and it may happen as soon as this week. It may be next week. But it's coming back. I'm not, I haven't left. I haven't left. I do need to get caught up on a couple of episodes first, though. Jesse McRae. Could Impact be the first wrestling company with a female franchise player? Impact needs to have a real, actual, legit franchise player before we start thinking about uh, a female face of the company. Furthermore, we need this company to actually figure out what the hell this company is going to be called and what the hell they're about. Now, apparently, they've finally split off from Jeff Jarrett and said, that crap's not happening. They need to worry about the face of the franchise in terms of what the hell their brand is called before we worry about anything else. Carminade wins. Can you do an entire video shirtless with nipple cam? What is with the recent obsession over my schleg titties? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. What, what, why are you guys so happy about my schleg titties? Do my schleg titties make you that happy? Why do you think I wore a zip-up hoodie? So that way you could see the schleg titties. There, I'm putting them back in. Entire video shirtless. I'm pretty sure in the past I've done most, uh, several segments shirtless, maybe a whole video shirtless. Will I do one in the future? Maybe when I'm in a little bit of better shape? Yes, yes I would. And especially if I look halfway decent up on the top half, then why wouldn't I? Just a 
say fuck y'all. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Ace the Sky Lord. I don't know about the nipple cam though. Ace the Sky Lord asks if WWE's India tour is a massive success in terms of box office, in terms of network subscribers, will Jinder Mahal be a main eventer for life? If, and that's a big, 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 if, the answer would be yes. And honestly, from a business standpoint, it would have to be. Doesn't mean he'd have to be the guy with the belt or always wrestling in the title feud, but he would have to continue to be featured in a certain way. Even if the U.S. audience hated him, but you had enough of the Indian and international audience to like him, then yeah, you would have to. And you'd be dumb from a business standpoint if you didn't until you found somebody that was better for that spot for that role. It's ironic to me when you think about guys like Jinder. Jinder specifically is getting his run solely because of two things. One, he got gassed up. And two, he's of Indian freaking descent. Period. Whereas black guys don't get that push because they are black. Jinder is actually getting a push because Jinder is Jinder and who Jinder is and what his background and demographics are. It's just crazy how that works in WWE. Uh, Charles McCain, thoughts on the possibility of Daniel Bryan wrestling when his WWE contract expires next year? I think it's a given, whether it's with the company or somewhere else. Daniel Bryan's wrestling again. I don't know if it'll be full, full full-time, but he's going to wrestle on a somewhat consistent basis, I believe. And from the WWE standpoint, while again, I get it as I referenced a little earlier in the video why you wouldn't want to have him. You're at a point in time where you really can't pick and choose, and you really can't pick and choose your battles. You need guys that are over, period. You need guys that can, you know, re-enfranchise some of your fans to the product. You have to go there with Daniel Bryan. And to not do so is completely and totally foolish, idiotic, and really, honestly, just bad business. Because if you have to go that out of your way, and I know what a lot of you are going to say, and frankly, you're kind of right. Similar with the Cena crap, now with Reigns again. If you have to go that far to protect a guy, then how much of a real franchise player or top guy is he? But honestly, putting Daniel Bryan in that spot is not going to change the way people react to Roman one way or another any damn way. So what difference does that make? Daniel Bryan should be wrestling for this company sometime in 2018, and WrestleMania 34 should be the return to that. I truly believe that. Or, no... Just to fuck with people, I would love to say the 2018 Royal Rumble just so that way Roman Reigns could eliminate him. <laughs> but uh, he needs to be he needs to be wrestling for that company. And if not, if that's what he wants to do, he wants to go wrestle somewhere else, even though I wouldn't take the risk physically. I don't think there's a need to. That's what he wants to do. That's ultimately his choice, his bet. He's got to lie in it. Dylan Johnson, if HBK were to come back for a match at WrestleMania, who should he face? Based off of who's in the company now and who matters in the company now, I think obviously AJ Styles would be the most logical choice. It would have to be AJ. Uh, Keys 10, what one star from the Attitude Era would you want on today's roster? To me, it would not be Austin. It would not be Rock. I think the guy that would have the best chance of working is Mick Foley. Because you can work him face. You can work him heel. Tremendous on the mic. Can talk circles around anybody on that active full-time roster. Period. And honestly, for those that are going to disagree with me on this, I don't give a shit. My hot take, Mick Foley can walk circles on the mic in his prime around Paul Heyman because Paul Heyman was limited in what he could do. Paul Heyman, to me, was a little more narrow in his scope in terms of what he could do. Phenomenal and great at it. One of the best mouthpieces of all time. But in terms of depth, in terms of different styles, in terms of flexibility and versatility, he couldn't touch Mick. Period. And when you talk about the different characters and everything else, I I look at Foley and I say, here's a guy that was unselfish enough. He would work with other guys. He would get the most out of them. He would uh, relaunch careers. Imagine a Mick Foley working a full program with Bray Wyatt. You know, Mick's not going to go out there and let himself look stupid, but he's not necessarily going to be concerned about having to win and go over ultimately. Bray Wyatt, Finn Balor. I'm just thinking of guys, Kevin Owens. I mean, there's so many guys that a Mick Foley could work with that you could get more out of them and they would be better off for it. So it's got to be Mick Foley. Unless you were going to say, heal Mr. McMahon. That's the obvious. Because you built an entire great era around the heel boss. If it's not Mr. McMahon, it's got to be Foley. Uh, McLovin, would you support gender beating Brock clean? <laughs> Fuck no. 
Listen, I don't like Brock. I'm not a fan of Brock. And I think his title run has been absolutely atrocious. And I think the whole notion of trying to hide this crap until Mania so he could drop to Reigns is ludicrous. But him losing to Jinder clean, give me a freaking break. Jinder had, couldn't even beat Randy Orton clean. Then getting the help of two people, the Singh brothers in the Punjabi prison match, just so that way the great Kali could come in and be the fourth guy involved in the match, so that way Jinder Mahal could win. And now he's going to beat Brock clean? Give me a fucking break. Dirty interference? Maybe. Clean? Fuck that. MIM Arsenal. Least favorite wrestling theme ever. Everyone Jeff Jarrett ever had. Bottoms up! Drunk son of a bitch. Zach Powers, is a debate between you and Brian Zane, wrestling with regret, on the state of WWE possible since he tends to be so positive and you tend to be so negative. Anytime wrestling with regret guy wants to have a WWE discussion of whatever it's about of any kind, could be on any number of issues, I would be glad to have the discussion. I would welcome it. I would love it. And I would hope it would be a discussion that we wouldn't just agree 100% because, frankly, those discussions aren't very fun. They just aren't. So, hell yeah. I would, I would talk to anybody on a video about the state of WWE or about wrestling. I don't care who it would be. I don't care if it's Brian Zane. I don't care if it's Steven Larson. I don't care if it's the, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not the Blampede crew. Uh, <laughs> but if I send you pictures of my tits, Will you take me in? Um, it could be freaking Wrestling Jesus. It could be Sean's View. It could be Joe Cronin, JD from New York. The point is, I don't give a shit. I'd never back away from a conversation about WWE or wrestling. Why the hell would I? I live for that stuff. I enjoy that stuff. Frankly, outside of doing these videos, I really don't have much of anybody to talk about with this stuff anyway. So why wouldn't I? Hell yeah, I would. Tell them you want to make it happen. Find a topic. Set that shit up. Let's make it happen. Um, the Copper Wolf. When did your passion for making videos start? It was in 2010. Tony and I were, had been talking a little bit about it. And we thought, you know, hey, there's got to be other fans that think like this. And as we went to YouTube and we saw some other people and we saw some of the videos and we're like, oh, my God. And this is real, real dope. We said, oh, my God, we have got to be better more fun, more entertaining than this hot garbage of the, I am going to read off of this, talk about specific moves, and then give a star rating, and then repeat over and over and over again. And if it is ROH, we will give it minimum nine stars. That's what it was. And, you know, we're like, eh, we should try it. And I will say this just about wrestling in general. And I feel the impacts to this channel sometimes is, Wrestling to me is best enjoyed in a group with a set of friends. It is so much more enjoyable, so much more fun than watching it by yourself. And I can tell you this much just in terms of doing videos, but just talking about it in general and attitude towards it. I could shit on it exactly the same, if not even more so, and with a group of people doing a whole bunch of different crap to do so. And it would still come across better, still come across more enjoyable, not as much bitchy and whiny as it does now when it's just the one guy. It's just different. Um, but that's when the passion really started. was about 2010. Rick Styles, should WWE do a monthly campaign for men's cancers? Absolutely. I don't know why the hell they don't. Nothing against the ladies because breast cancer is an insidious disease, but cancer in general, regardless of the type, is an insidious disease. So why would we not have a month devoted to men's cancer when the vast majority of the company is male? The vast majority of the audience is also male. I don't freaking get it. I just don't. Or just sit there and have a month devoted to cancer research and cancer awareness, and you can incorporate all different types of them. You know, I know they do with Connor's Cure and then Susan G. Komen, so really we're talking about Connor's Cure in terms of trying to actually defeat cancer, but that's it. That's strange. Uh, and then WW Frieza for Life asks, which do you prefer, a thick, fit chick with huge tits and no ass or a big ass with some flat, itty-bitty titties? So this is the old double D, triple A versus triple A, double D question. What do I mean by that? Double D tits, triple A kind of almost caved in ass versus triple A tits, like not even schleg titties worthy, and a double D put dunka 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 butt that you could just go. Rah, 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 rah. 
Um, I'm a hips and an ass man. There's just something to me about the lady has to have a bigger ass than me. Call it shallow, call it what you want. It doesn't mean they have to have a huge, like, a, there you go, and you got the little hourglass, and what the fuck happened? I've had some like that. But, definitely more of a hips and ass man. Doesn't mean that a woman with a smaller butt but nice tits isn't attractive either. But if you're asking my preference, it would be for the padunkadunk. And if we don't have so much up there in the titty category, well, then you know what? I've got the man breast anyways, the schleg titties to make up for it in the relationship. Just saying. And no way I would blampede. I'm not going to send you a picture of my tits. Even though everybody's going to crucify the guy for being male sleaze, even though the women still ultimately sent him the pictures anyways. Stop making them out the victims. Mental health, my ass. Depression, my ass. You dumb bitches, don't send naked pictures of yourself on the fucking internet. How about that? How about that? But anyways, this has been the OTRS Central q and I've enjoyed it. Thanks for the questions. We'll do it again soon. Make sure you check out the other ch videos on this channel. And remember, buy a shirt and OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Goodbye.